chapter 2 and the end of that chapter. Christ carried our sins in his body on the cross so that we would stop living for sin and start living for what is right. I've been reflecting on the idea that Christ lived a substitutionary life as well as dying a substitutionary death. That Jesus sanctified our life by the way that he lived it. It wasn't just a kind of a forensic exchange. It wasn't just a, a, an idea or a concept. He sanctified our life by the way he lived through it. So he is the model that we're to follow. And in 1 Peter chapter 2, the suffering Jesus is our standard, our standard of behaviour. But he's also our substitute. And finally, in verse 25 there, he's our, our shepherd. Now, if you think about the life of the church, right at the heart of the church's life is, is communion, the breaking of bread. And at the Lord's table, we take the bread and the cup and we remember, we, 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 we come into communion, like we come into union with, with, with Christ. That's a very significant uh, doctrine at the heart of that. And it's summed up in words that you've probably heard a hundred times. It says, this is my body, which is given for you. Given for you. So the essence of the Christian gospel is that Jesus has done something for us. And more specifically, he died for us. And that's the point. His death was for us. And that's what Peter is saying in 1 Peter chapter 2. He says, Christ suffered for you, verse 21. He suffered for you. It was for us that Christ suffered. That's, that's the point he's making, okay? So we look at the uh, suffering of Christ in three ways. Um, Christ suffered for you, as he says in verse 21. He leaves you an example or a pattern or a standard or a model for you to follow in his steps. He leaves you a pattern for the way that you suffer as well. Not, not quite such good news, is it, all of a sudden? And, he, and Peter says, this is how you were to suffer. You were to suffer without opening your mouths, without reviling the people who are causing you pain, and uttering no threats, but keeping on entrusting yourself to the one who judges righteously. Read it. Read it for yourself. That's what he says. Christ suffered on the cross to give us an example about how we are to suffer patiently, how we're to endure uh, unjust treatment. In fact, Jesus suffered far more than we could ever do because he was perfect, because he, he, his spirit registered uh, imperfection far more than we do. We are, we are sullied by sin, by the stain of sin. We've grown used to it, but Jesus didn't. Jesus didn't grow used to sin. And so he suffered in a way that none of us will really know in, in, in terms of extent. And in doing such suffering, he was the example of uh, endurance. He gives us a model of patient endurance. Though he all this stuff was coming at him, he answered not a word. And so he becomes our standard, our pattern. And Peter says, that's the way you should live. He suffered to set an example. And we will suffer unjustly as believers in an ungodly society every time we are true to the pattern of Jesus Christ. Not from time to time. So every time the church really becomes the body of Christ, then it is getting itself ready for crucifixion. And every time you raise up the standard of Jesus Christ in an ungodly society, then you are, it's like uh, one of those First World War films where you raise your head above the trench and shout merrily at your enemy. And we're to follow the pattern of Jesus Christ. But there's another way in which he, he suffered for us. He suffered not only as our standard, as a means by which we can say a model by which we can follow, but he suffered as our substitute. 
Look at verse 24. This is a brilliant text. It should be underlined in every Bible. And he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sin and live to righteousness for by his wounds you were healed. So this speaks about Jesus as our substitute. It speaks about Christ as the one who took our place. And Peter is referring here to Isaiah chapter 53 verses 4, 5 and verse 11 because in those verses in the Old Testament Isaiah is talking about the substitutionary sin-bearing death of the Messiah and this is the very centre of the Christian gospel. Jesus died for us. We'll come back to it another time. God bless you today.